On show 441, we're talking electric planes, electric buses, and a former Formula One Supremo says the future is electric. All those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee. Here's your edition for Friday the 12th of April. I've been through all of the stories that I can find today and saved you time by whittling them down to this one. Uh, Last working day of the week. Tomorrow will be into the weekend. You've got a couple of days to get your question of the week in, by the way, however you want to do that, whether you're listening to this on YouTube, if you do listen to the audio that way, Some people like to do that, and maybe you're doing it the more traditional podcast way. You can email me either way. Our question of the week will be at the end of the show. Thank you to everyone. I had a few reviews come through today for some reason. Kind of a funny coincidence, I suppose. People got round to it. Uh, So thank you very much if you have left a review for this show recently as well. It means an an awful lot. Thank you, too, to the team at myev.com for helping make this show. If you haven't checked them out yet and you're in the US, maybe you checked them out before... Maybe you've not been back in a while and you haven't typed myev.com into your browser. Well, look, here's your little weekend reminder. It's a job for the weekend. Go check it out. Let's talk about, well, we'll start off with this Tesla story then. Tesla stock has fallen after a report came out. Tesla shares today traded at their lowest level in five sessions after this report said that the, the car maker and Panasonic, of course, their battery maker, have put on hold plans to expand the Nevada Gigafactory. This is according to Market Watch, but it was reported widely today. Demand for battery cells continues to outstrip supply, Tesla said. The two companies made their decisions due to concerns about weakening demand for Tesla vehicles. The Nikkei reported. Well, a Tesla spokesperson told... Uh, from uh, from Tesla, uh, told Nikkei, of course, they would make new investments in the Nevada factory as needed. Contrary to what the report was implying, Tesla wanted to correct that implication that was made. Demand for cells, say Tesla, demand for cells continues to outpace supply, and it remains the fundamental constraint on the production of Tesla vehicles and stationary energy storage devices like the Tesla Powerwall and the Power Pack, the spokesperson said. And even anyone with a slightest understanding of Tesla's business would know that, yes, they're not exactly flush with cells at the moment. They're making plenty, but they need plenty more, if only to build power walls and power packs. So to say, anyway, so you know that. Uh, Interesting report out today. They have built out the Nevada Gigafactory at Sparks, Nevada, so rapidly with so much investment. It just seems like a bit of a non-story to say we're pressing pause. We're working out where the inefficiencies are. We're going to we've got to a stage now We do some housekeeping and then we will go forward again. But, you know, these things get blown up. So you may have seen this story flying around today. So I wanted to report that first in the news. Meanwhile, Simon at Tesla Rati had the scoop today on when we'll hear the next results. We know that the quarter one deliveries for the S and the X were probably the dark cloud hanging over them. Uh, the results from Tesla have been announced. They will be posting their financial results for Q1, so Jan, Feb and March, after the market closes in a couple of weeks' time, Wednesday, April 24th. Now, the company would be issuing a brief advisory, as they always do. It's a couple of page PDF with a link to it, uh, to their letter, really the Q1 letter. Uh, it's accessible from the IR, the, sorry, the Investor Relations website website. That's the place that I always go to to listen to the live Q&A session. 2.30 Pacific time, they have the investor call where various investors and sometimes those representing retail investors get to go on it as well and ask some questions. It's it's an interesting thing to listen to if you're super nerdy like I am. And I always record that call and the day after on this podcast if you haven't heard it i always play you a few select clips the the most interesting bits elon always begins with a statement from elon musk and so that's normally the bit that you want to dig into and read into what he's saying so that's going to be a couple of weeks away tesla rati notes the call is actually earlier this time around conducting its uh, earnings call earlier in the year than previous Q1 calls. It remains to be seen if their early earnings call is because of positive news. They probably want to get some positive news out into the market. That's why they've brought it forward from where it should be. Maybe that is a 
you know, more profitable story than people are presuming. All eyes are going to be on the company as it is expected to release updates on the number of their projects and how many of them are, are where they are in the timeline. So Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai is the biggie. And it just blows me away when you see those drone shots that people are taking and putting on YouTube. What was basically mud a couple of months ago is it, there's buildings going up and it's like... Goodness me, the Chinese do things quickly. There's also the $35,000 Model 3. Has anybody actually got one yet? Or is it always the standard range plus that are being delivered? Full self-driving suite. What's the latest? We'll find out very soon, actually. There is a um, a day for investors to do with autonomy that I've talked to you about on the podcast before. The solar roof. Elon was recently at Gigafactory 2 in Buffalo. Told you about that on yesterday's show. What's the latest with solar? And, of course, those future projects. We know what the Model Y looks like now. You can you can order one. But what about the pickup, which is said to be Elon's pet project? Uh, that could just be a wild rumour, by the way. And also the Semi. We're looking forward to hearing updates on all of those things. Let's go to China then. And Geely is the Chinese automaker behind companies like Volvo and therefore Polestar, uh, Lotus as well. Now, they're now going to embark on another adventure. This time, it's a creation all of their own, according to CNET. Geely today introduced Geometry. Geometry is a spin-off, and it's going to be a spin-off automaker dedicated solely to making electric vehicles. Geometry is going to have 10 EVs on the market by 2025, covering a wide variety of segments, from sedans to MPVs. At the same time, Geometry rolled out its first car. It's called Geometry A. We see where this is going. Two different batteries to start with. 52 kilowatt hours will give you 255 miles range. 62 kilowatt hours will give you 311 miles range. That is on the old-fashioned NEDC, which is more optimistic than WLTP, which is more optimistic than the EPA range. So expect those numbers to come down a bit. However, it's not a lot of money. Standard range version, $31,000. Extended range version, $34,000 equivalent. And that, when you think about it, is before all of those Chinese subsidies are applied. So the price gets quite low. Let's talk about electrifying boats and planes. We'll start with the boats then. Ballard Power Systems. They've signed an agreement, uh, an equipment supply agreement uh, to uh, Norled. Now that's one of Norway's largest ferry and express boat operators. And what they're going to do is they're going to provide two next generation 200 kilowatt fuel cell modules to power a hybrid ferry from 2021. These new fuel cell modules are designed and manufactured at the company's new Marine Centre of Excellence in Denmark. And the Norled vessel has been carrying people, 299 passengers actually, and 80 cars up till now. Uh, But it's going to be the very first liquid hydrogen fuel cells uh, ferry in commercial operation anywhere on the planet. And this makes a lot of sense in terms of fuel cell technology. Things like big installations. So if they need to refuel when the ferry gets to either terminal, it's a fixed route that it, it has. That infrastructure makes sense. Uh, if you are operating trains, that makes sense. Even planes, I think, it, you know, in theory, with my tiny brain, makes sense. Fuel cells for cars makes no sense at all, uh, because you don't want to be carrying around all of that to basically generate electricity to then do what an EV does anyway. So that technology for personal transport is there. But the bigger projects where you need really big amounts of energy, that's where fuel cells make more sense, actually. Okay, from that one to this one, and let's talk planes, but let's stay in Norway. Norway's OSM Aviation is a firm that specialises in recruitment and training for the aviation industry, and they have just ordered 60 new planes. But what's different about this order is they are all electric. Now, they're buying them from the Colorado-based electric aircraft maker called Buy Aerospace, not B-U-Y to buy something, but bye-bye, see you later, B-Y-E, Aerospace. Says Phil for Electric, OSM Aviation, he says, announced the order on its website today, and the CEO of the company claims it's the largest order ever for commercial electric planes. It's going to be for Buy Aerospace's E-Flyer 2. The E-Flyer 2 
if I've talked about it on the podcast before, I would have called it the Sunflyer. It uses a Siemens propulsion system. It's got a 90 kilowatt peak rating, 120 horsepower, continuous rating of 70 kilowatts. And the E-Flyer 2 had its first official test flight on February the 8th. It's a two-seater aircraft. It's good for training and things like that. They cost $350,000 a plane. Yes, that's a lot of money, but... While the other planes would normally cost $110 per hour to fly, an electric plane costs $20 per hour. So you make the money back and then some. And let's stay in the air, but this time kind of combining the air and the sea because we're going to talk seaplanes now. It's always great to hear stories like this next one from the seaplane operator Harbour Air. They're in Vancouver, Canada, and they're switching their entire fleet to electricity, says Kling Technica today. When the world's largest float plane airline, they're called Harbour Air, Harbour Air is switching to become all electrically powered. You know something is going on right now, somewhere in the world, with boats and ferries and planes, not just the road transport that you and I talk about like 99% of the time. Harbour Air will be the first seafaring airline to convert its entire fleet of a twin otter aircraft and a lone Cessna caravan to electricity. They are 41 vintage aircraft, and they're not going to get rid of the planes. These, air, these seaplanes are going to be converted they're going to reach a longer life cycle, and they do that with this highly improved efficiency and lower maintenance cost by making them electrically powered. Just brilliant. Hey, let's talk about a story that I saw uh, yesterday, maybe it was, and I wanted to do some digging on this. And I found some interesting articles today about Mercedes-Benz and solid-state battery technology. The public transport company in Germany from Wiesbaden, or Weisbaden, I think I would say that. Uh, the company is called... Hmm, look at that word. That's got some syllables in. Uh, that one, right? That transport company in Germany has ordered 56 Mercedes-Benz e Citaro buses for the urban routes. With the commission, the city of Wiesbaden, or Weisbaden is switching a fifth of its bus fleet to electric in a very short period of time. Mercedes-Benz is looking after everything to do with it as well, like the adaption of the service, the equipment, the charging infrastructure. Mercedes-Benz aren't just selling them the vehicles and then forgetting about it. They are sorting out the whole charging process itself. Planned tasks include things like building transformer stations and the installation of cables on the site. There are 41 e Citaro buses remaining, and they are going to be used to try out solid-state batteries. And this is where I'm really interested. Solid-state battery has been this kind of mythical thing on the horizon where... It has so many benefits, a few disadvantages, but actually if you can make the technology work and commercialise it, it will mean that the lithium-ion batteries we have now have been a, se a stepping stone onto this new technology. Well, Mercedes-Benz are going to be using solid-state batteries with a very high energy density. Seven battery packs are sufficient to give the total capacity of the bus a big old battery. 441 kilowatt hours. With solid state batteries, the e-Citaros can meet about 70% of all requirements without needing to stop en route to do a little top-up charge. The characteristics of solid state batteries, they differ quite a lot actually from lithium-ion batteries. They are different in shape. They're larger. You can't really quick charge these particular ones, by the way. I'm sure there are other technologies that you can. Not suitable for quick charging. As a result, the buses the Mercedes-Benz are building will be equipped with these solid-state batteries to cover the profiles of operation that suit them. So for that reason, they are going to offer either the lithium-ion batteries or the solid-state. So it's great. There's new technology coming to market all the time. We love that. Right, finally, a bit more of a light-hearted story. Bernie Eccleston, the former Formula One Supremo. And Formula One these days uh, sold to a, a, a different company. I was going to say sold to Liberty Media, but I think they've changed their name, something to do with Formula One. Anyway, Jalopnik says that despite the fact that Bernie Eccleston is no longer the big cheese at Formula One, the man who made the sport, really, still makes headlines because when he says something, people pay attention because he ran the sport for so long. 
often sensational. He likes to talk about racing. This time, he has hit the headlines for coming out to say that Formula One is motorsport of the past. Formula E is the future. And yes, so Bernie can say things that are sometimes... You have to wonder why he... No, I, I do think he... Like, I quite like... I liked when he was running Formula One. I think the new regime are doing a fantastic job because they're opening it up to social media, to younger audiences, to make it more accessible. So, you know, I like the state of Formula One, but Bernie always said something to generate headlines and and it was always a kind of bit of a circus as well. Uh, So when a billionaire says that F1's dead and that Formula E is the future, electric racing... It's kind of funny because he was horrified by the new era of engines as they were far too quiet and that motorsport needed loud noise. Now, a few years later, he is siding with Formula E. He argues in a Reuters interview today that Formula E is going to be the way forward, that that is the future. It's a different form of entertainment, but Formula E will begin to get bigger, bigger audiences all the time. And... It's what they're doing anyway, actually. This new generation car is amazing, but you just wait. Formula E, I don't think it's barely scratched the surface. It is going to become mega. Formula One will suffer because of that. There's more of a chance of expansion in Formula E, he says, and more chances commercially than there is in Formula One. I saw a couple of comments after this on my timeline today saying, oh, you know, if that's the case, Formula One will just shift to electric. They can't. One of the really clever things that Formula E and Alejandro Agag, the incredible guy behind Formula E, they signed the agreement with the FIA, the sanctioning body, to be the only fully electric series. So even if Formula One wanted to go all electric, they couldn't. That's super interesting. Oh, look, everything's up for negotiation, I'm sure, all of the time when there's big checks to write. But at this stage, Formula E has the rights. So Formula One just can't change overnight. I'll put links to all of those stories in the show notes if you want to read more. It's been a really inspirational day of news today. Not a lot of car stuff, but I think it's uh, no, a really good day of, of reasons to be positive. Oh, actually, you know, I got I just looked at the time. I've been going, what, 16, 17 minutes. Real super quickie. We talked about the e- Audi e-tron yesterday, and I played you that advert, and I shared it online. It did really well, and people are like, loving that video that we that we put, the, the Audi TV commercial. Uh, March was really, March was Model 3 March, when you think about it. Tesla had all the headlines, but... The e-tron's done very well here in Europe. According to an Audi press release today, there were 621 of them in Norway and 490 in Germany. And you can always check out Inside EVs for the latest sales numbers. Thank you very much to myev.com for sending our question of the week this week. Keep your comments coming in on the usual places. And it's this. Would you buy a very high mileage EV? Because I saw one for sale with quarter of a million miles. And I was thinking, well, it, you know, it'd be a fun toy you know what i mean like you'd be prepared to have issues but it'd be a fun journey to go on you know i was in a a tesla last week that had done 200 miles and that new car smell oh it was lovely oh p100d as well oh so nice but the other end of the scale like what's a car that done quarter of a million miles going to be like so the drivetrain probably fine but you know suspension wear and tear inside all that kind of stuff so would you buy one though would you buy a very high mileage EV. Are you not bothered? Because there's no oil to change. There's no catalytic converter. There's none of the bits that wear out on ice cars. Email me. Hello at evnewsdaily.com and you can leave a little comment on Facebook and YouTube. Okie doke, time for the endy bit. Thank you to 210 patrons of the show for keeping me going. There are 440 previous shows online for free. And if you don't like any of them, you can have your money back. <laughs> Enjoy those free shows. Uh, They are online right now if you want to download any of them. But hit subscribe to get new shows first and free and automatically. And if you want to leave a little review on your platform of choice, that would mean a lot to me as well. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I will catch you tomorrow at the weekend. And remember, there really is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.